We've just completed our mini DPS review and honestly, you've done a spectacular job. Awesome, thank you so much. Next up, we're gonna be reviewing all of the ranged DPS specs. Should we go and have a quick sneak peek? Yeah. Ion, did you bring a boombox with you again, you party animal? I know you like to party. Hello guys, how is it going? Welcome back to another ranged DPS Dragonflight beta review, specifically for Mythic Plus. Today we are reviewing Shadow Priest. I'm honestly so surprised with how good Shadow Priest is. I was not expecting this. I had heard a few range specs were doing really well, so I had checked those out whilst I was doing my melee DPS reviews, right? So I checked out Ellie Shaman just because I, I love the class. I checked out Boomkin and I checked out Demonology Warlock, right? I'd also had a little bit of a look at Evoker. Shadow Priest has just completely gone under the radar for me. I did not know it was going to be this good. I'd heard that it was okay, the changes were decent, right? I think it's because, specifically for Raiden, the changes aren't that amazing. They, they're pretty good, right? Like, they're, they're decent, but they're not, like, unbelievably good, right? They're not, like, crazy changes. And I think that's just, like... It's tinted how everyone's been talking about Shadow Priest, but specifically for Mythic Plus, I am so surprised with these changes and how good they are. They're completely giving you, like, on-demand damage. They're giving you um, extra, like, funnel and stuff. It, it's honestly really good. Once we get into it, you'll understand very quickly that the class looks incredibly strong in terms of damage profile for Mythic Plus. I'm very, very excited about it. What we're going to do then, in terms of the structure, we'll do the same structure as always. We'll go through the three big wins, the three big L's, any notable mentions, and we'll go through a score. I'm going to give you the score straight away, so you can just close the window if you want to. It's going to be a 9 out of 10. Quick reasons why, right? It's getting to 9 out of 10 because it's getting snap on-demand damage now. You can spread your dots very, very easily. They're reworking the way that Searing Nightmare is working, so now Mindseer is an actual spender. I really like these. It just gives you like on-demand damage in Mythic Plus, which is awesome. You're also getting some great changes in terms of like your utility with like twins being baseline now. So the the legendary which made um, PI, so power infusion, be cast both on yourself and the target. Right, that's that helps you a lot. Specifically for Mythic Plus, again, it gives you a baseline, the same sort of utility as like Holy Priest, right? Because Obviously, you were always going to use PI on yourself, but now you can give it to someone else. So these changes are all good. The reason why it's not getting a 10 out of 10 is because I think there's two issues which I would have loved to have seen changed. If either of these, I think I would have needed both of these to be changed, to be honest, to give it a 10 out of 10. Um, the only 10s that I've given are where I think that the spec is only gaining and it's gained everything that it's ever needed, right? I don't think that's quite happening for Shadow. So the two reasons are movement and interrupts, right? So... Priest is the only class in the game that doesn't have access to an interrupt very easily, right? You have a silence, which is okay, but it's 45 seconds long if you want to take Psychic Horror at the same time. You have an AoE stop, but you don't have an interrupt, like a 22 second interrupt, which is what you normally get as a range spec, right? You can't spec into that. And then movement-wise, you don't have any fast movement. I would have liked them to either, there used to be a way of making leap, uh, leap of Faith so that you could like jump to a target. I think I would have loved to have seen that. Or maybe give just just give Shadow Priest like Door of Shadows, you know, it's a, it's a shadowy based movement. Like maybe give them like Door of Shadows or something, but you get some baseline movement, but it's not enough. So those are the very quick rundown as to why it's getting a 9 out of 10, it's not getting a 10 out of 10. But if you want to see the DLs, stick around. I, like I said, I am so excited for this. I'm so surprised with how good it is. I, I've played Shadow Priest a little bit. I actually got my first ever cutting edge on Shadow Priest, so that was Gul'dan back in Legion, right? But I've not really played it ever since that. I changed to Ellie Shaman and a little bit of Rogue later on in Legion, and I've not played it since. But it really has surprised me. It surprised me so much with how good this feels. It's such a, a simple and effective rotation. Again, I think it's similar to Feral in this regard, right? Where I, I feel like the changes to its AOE have made it like simple yet effective and its profile is just getting way better. So it honestly feels like Feral to me. It's, it's really, really surprising. I, I did not expect this at all. Um, so the first big win, right? The first big win is that they are remaking Mindseer. So it's been completely reworked. And then the way that you spread your dots is being reworked. So now you get Dark Void and you get Shadow Crash, which are both spreading your dots. 
the fact that you can now spread your dots very easily, both on 30 second cooldowns, right? So they line up perfectly. And then you can spend your insanity on Mindseer in AoE much I I personally think it's less clunky than having to use Searing Nightmare during Mindseer. I think this is a really good direction. So let's just quickly show you, right, how quickly you can get into doing your, uh, using your CDs and like doing your actual burst open, all right? So Dark Void, Shadow Crash, and I'm just, I'm into CDs. Do you know what I mean? Like this is just dot spread and you're just doing damage at this point. Like if you've got enough uh, insanity, right? Um, you just mind seer at this point. So superb. I, I really like it. I think it's simple and effective. Um, if I was using mind seers and I was actually in my rotation, it keeps the durations up so you never lose dots either. You can always have dots up. So if a pack is going to live longer than like 30 seconds, right, then you can just maintain your dots. It's really, really good. I, I, I much prefer this, and I think specifically for Mythic Plus, as long as packs aren't dying so quickly that you do two pulls within 30 seconds, and the next pull, you're not going to have Dark Void and Shadow Crash up. This is just, it's a great change. It really is. I um, I really, really like it. So that's the first big win. You're also getting lots of other AOE damage that we'll cover in the notable mentions, but I, I think that just the, the simplicity of how you're now going to be able to do your AOE damage, I think is, is excellent, and is uh, a great direction to take the the spec the next win is utility right and it, it is essentially just in twin suns here so pi is baseline as part of the priest tree and then you can get twins of the sun priestess the reason why this is going into the big wins and it's not just a notable mentions right is because the problem with shadow priest on live isn't necessarily that it doesn't do great damage like it can do decent damage it's not necessarily that it isn't tanky, right? It's tanky enough. It's that it brings no utility because Holy Priest is just one of the best healers of the game. Probably the, the S tier healer, right? And the fact that it gives PI to Warlock means that it's just incredibly, incredibly good. Wins means that your damage now stays the same, but you can give that PI to the Warlock in the group. And that means that you can bring just as much utility as a Holy Priest. Baseline on live, Holy Priest brings more utility than Shadow Priest, right? Because you're going to be using PI on yourself, whereas Holy Priest doesn't care about using PI on itself. It'll give a PI to someone else. Twins is a really, really big win for Shadow Priest because it means that you just bring as much utility as Holy now, or Disc, say, if they were good healers. I, think, I do think you're still going to have an issue where if Holy Priest or Disc are the best Mythic Plus healers, right? Then you're not going to bring any utility to the group, really, other than a second PI on a, on one of the, the DPS. So essentially what would happen is if you play Disc and Shadow Priest in a comp, all three DPS are going to end up with PIs, right? Because you'll get twins on yourself, you'll PI someone else, and then the Holy Priest will be, will, will be PIing the other DPS. But other than that, you're actually not going to bring much to the group because Fort has already been taken, right? Um, your, like, Dominate Mind or, like, Mind Control is already... Shadow Priest is just bringing that. It's the same as with um, Holy, right? Like, there's nothing utility-wise that you really bring in this tree. I mean, you bring Silence and Psychic Horror, right? But, like, if you brought another spec, they're going to have a better kick, potentially a better single target stop as well. So... There's nothing that like really differentiates Shadow, but at least you bring as much now. So the risk is still very real that if Holy or Disc are the best Mythic Plus healers, that, that means that Shadow isn't going to be as good as it could be. But if they aren't, and if there are legitimate options, so, you know, I don't know, Shaman, let's say, is the best, or Druid is one of the best, or Mistweaver, or whatever, then I really think that you bring a great amount of utility now and the fact that twins exists really does enable this like the fact that you actually give a pi to someone else is a, a significant amount of utility right it's really really good um so that's a the second big win the third big win is this single node over here idol of Enzoth. now essentially what this does is, so whenever you deal damage with Shadow Wood Pain, 
Vampiric Touch or Devouring Plague, right? There's a, a chance that you apply Echoing Void. Echoing Void can then collapse, and when it collapses, it deals shadow damage to all nearby enemies until no stacks remain, right? So it's like this stacking debuff based on your dot damage that then collapses and deals AoE damage. This by itself is incredibly good for uncapped AoE. Now, if we think about it right, Dark Void is applying Shadowwood Pain on up to 15 enemies. That's essentially uncapped. I mean, it's not quite, right? You understand there might be some instances where you pull like 20 mobs, but that's very, very rare. But essentially, this is uncapped damage in my mind. If up to 15 mobs, that's uncapped, right? This amount of uncapped damage coming into your profile is very, very good for Pathetic Plus. Obviously, it depends on tuning and how much damage it does, but this is just uncapped AoE that you don't have access to on live that you are now getting, which is really, really strong. All right, let's just show you a full AoE opener here. We can show you what this actually does in terms of your damage profile. So I'll just, I'll get my dots up, right? We'll use up like Halo mind games just at the start. We'll get a mind blast on cooldown. We'll then... UCDs, so Mind Bender into Void Eruption, and I'll just go into our normal rotation at the end. Once we're like out of CDs, essentially, we'll we'll see what it looks like in terms of the the damage that this is actually doing because it is a lot. And it, and honestly, this is this just scales with targets, right? Because obviously we're spreading Shadowwood Pain. So let's get our dots out. Use up some of our CDs, so Halo included. Right, use all of our CDs now. Use that proc. And so that was all of our CDs, right? So if we just look through this, it's not huge, but that's like literally just 13% of your damage profile is now uncapped AoE, right? Shadow Weird Pain is essentially up to 15 targets and we're progging it. Obviously, we're getting slightly more here because we've also got Vampiric Touches out, but let's just say you've also spread Vampiric Touches on a, like, I don't know, something like eight targets, I imagine you'll you'll want to get VTs out onto. Um, well, now... You're just getting this uncapped AoE extra added into your profile. Like, if we just run down this quickly, right? And don't forget that I just sat there with dots at the end of this, right? You can sustain about 75k to 80k on four targets. Tuning will happen. That number will not stay the same, right? But just in terms of, like, profile, dots are doing more damage than they should have done because I just let them expire. Do you get what I'm saying? But 25% plus another 15, completely uncapped, right? So this is just uncapped, yeah. So that's 40% of your damage. This is single target. So the dots are essentially Shadow Weird Pain. That's un uncapped damage, right? Vampiric Touch is not. It's going to be somewhere between four and eight targets. And it's going to be capped, right? Because you're not going to want to spread more than four, I don't think. This is single target damage. But if we just look at it, right? It's how many shadowy operations you spawn. Okay, so if you're spawning... Shadowy Operations more in AoE, then you're going to get more of these things from the Beyond Out, right? So that actually scales with uh number of VT targets again, so that's 4 to 8. So there's, there's what's that? That's 18% of your damage is 4 to 8, right? This is capped. However, to be honest with you, you may not even take this, right? So this is 5 targets. Um, It's here, right? Up to 5 nearby enemies. So that's 5 target capped, right? Uncapped. 4 to 8. Then single targets, uncapped, single target. This is uncapped if you take a talent, right? Um, uncapped. Like, honestly, I think it's something like 60% of your damage if you take the right talents, if, if you move away from Mindbender into um, Pain of Death, right, is is actually uncapped. <laughs> 
which is very, very good. That's really good for Mythic Plus. Yeah, really, really good. So this is adding in, like I said, just like 15, 16% uncapped AoE damage. So super strong. I absolutely love it. It's a, a great way to push Shadow Priest more into AoE. It's just It just gives you more AoE damage, right? So this is awesome. It's really, really strong. Really, really strong. So that's it for the three wins then. In terms of losses, so these losses are, they're really, they're not that bad, right? They're, they're not that bad. But again, I'm trying to come up with losses, right? So the, the first one is the fact that I'd love in Zoth, although it is really, really good. We have to come through Insidious Eye here. So while you have Shadow Weird Pain, Devouring Plague, and Vampiric Touch active on the same target, your Mind Blast deals 40% more damage. That's essentially useless for AoE. But we have to come through it to get into our uh, AoE capstone. If this just swapped with Yorg Saron, then I think it would make a lot more sense. So this is like uh, Encroaching Shadow. So it increases the initial damage of uh, Devouring Plague and the damage of Mindseer by 20%. That's AoE, right? Mindseer damage. Mind Devourer Mind Blast has a 20% chance to make your next Devouring Plague on Mindseer cost no insanity. AoE damage because it affects Mindseer, right? Pain of Death increases the damage of a Shadow Wood death by 13%. Um, and then 30% of its damage is dealt to all targets affected by your pain within 40 yards. So that's AoE again. If these swapped, I think it would make a lot more sense, but they aren't, so you have to go through Aya. There is a world where um, you do something like this, so you can come through Mind Blast increases insanity. That's a little bit sort of AoE, not really. Um, and you could take Torrent at a 30 second cooldown, right? So you would have Torrent at 30 second CD to get into ends off, but that's still single target, bit of funnel. I mean, the insanity is AoE damage really, but that's absolutely a possibility, and you could you could play like this if you wanted to. Um, you might even drop is it one point. Actually, I might be able to drop two points to do something like this, so you can still take Pain of Death, right? So then your Shadow with Death is hitting all targets affected by your Shadow with Pain. So you could end up with something like this, but this is still really single target-y. Um, I think that this swap would make more sense. The next loss, which we talked about at the start, is the fact that Silence isn't really getting changed and you don't have access to a kick. Um, it's not a huge loss, but it's enough that it's not perfect. Like, I would have loved it if you could take a node underneath here that just changes Silence into like a 22 second cooldown that interrupts the cast. Something like that, you know, make it like a Hunter kick. I think that would have been awesome. Um, I would have really, really liked that. But they, they've not really taken that opportunity. And then the, the final loss is movement. So again, you have access to some movement, right? You have access to Angelic Feather, Body and Soul over here. So you can you can increase your movement speed to 40% fairly often, right? So you can get some, some movement. But you don't really have any way of quickly moving anywhere. So Door of Shadows was like perfect to bring forwards for Shadow Priest in my mind. I would have loved that. I'd have loved to have seen Dwarf Shadows come forward for, for Shadow Priest, but they haven't. It is a big loss. They haven't taken the opportunity to say, make it so you could take a node underneath where Leap of Faith means that you jump to a, another target. So, like, you could just jump to the healer in the group to, like, avoid something, maybe. I don't know. But something like that, I think, would have been awesome. Unfortunately, they, ha they haven't brought it forwards again. So, you have, like, less movement than Rhett, even, right? And Rhett still feels bad to play sometimes. So, it's um it's a bit of a feels bad. I can appreciate that they have just left some classes without movement because that's like part of their style, but it never really feels like you gain in any other way. It's not like because you don't have movement, you have insane utility. You know, I, I would I would say that Boomkin just has better utility than Shadow Priest, but then also has incredibly good movement. It's not really that fair, to be honest. Like, you know, you get a single target silence on a 45 second CD, Boomkin gets an AoE silence on a 45 second CD, right? Boomkin just has AoE stops, has more AoE stops than you. You know, you've only got Scream. It has Mark of the Wild now when you bring Fort. Like, Mark of the Wild, I would say, is better than Fort. Do you know what I mean? But then you just also don't have movement, even though Boomkin has lots of movement. <laughs> it's a bit silly, really, that they don't really take these opportunities to just, like, level utility, but... You know, it is what it is. I still think the changes in terms of like AoE damage and everything are great. You know, it's a nine, it is a nine out of ten, but it's just a bit of a feels bad that 
you aren't getting any way to just have a kick or make silence AoE or something, I don't know, or you're not getting any way to gain movement. So a bit unfortunate, that would have been great to see. So yeah, those are the three wins and the three losses then. The notable mentions, right? So these are all also very, very strong. So the first thing I'm going to mention is off healing, right? So you can actually do a fairly large amount of off healing now. So Halo is now in the priest tree, right? And Halo creates a ring of shadow energy around you that quickly expands to 30 yard radius, healing allies for 11k and dealing 11k damage to enemies. Healing is reduced beyond six targets, but the damage is uncapped. So like this is actual uncapped AOE damage now. Pretty cool, right? But you also get healing here. You can also, I mean, I've taken this specifically just because I wanted to show it, but you maybe don't have to take this, but you can get Holy Nova, right? Which is damage and healing again, uh, AOE healing. And then you can let it stack up to 20 times, right? So every five seconds that you do not cast Holy Nova, it then stacks up. Um, it stacks up a, a buff, right? And then you do a lot of healing and a lot of damage. It's not a lot of damage really, but it's it's a decent amount. And again, it's just AOE healing. So if you need to, you can just like on demand use these. And then you have Vampiric Embrace. It's only like a one and a bit minute cooldown, right? So you can cover off a lot of damage during... I mean, it's not the best of heals. I don't think it's as good as, say, like Ancestral Guidance, which I think is just all of your damage from Shamans, right? So it's really good for AoE situations. But this is more effective in Mythic Plus than it is in Raiden, right? Because it just... It does... Your damage then heals a target for the single, single target damage that you've done you have less targets in Mythic Plus, so it's more effective. So it is still very strong in Mythic Plus, right? Like, you can actually do off healing with this. So the combination of these, of, like, Holy Nova with, like, a, a stack and buff that then does more healing, Halo and Vampiric Embrace, you can probably cover a lot of throughput as Shadow Priest now, like, a lot. And if you needed to, right, like, this is a... It, it probably could be a, its own mention, but Void Shift is now moving from a PvP talent to becoming a, a Priest talent. This is just a. This could just be a lifesaver in certain situations, um, where someone's taking a lot of damage. Right, they have a debuff on them. I'm thinking like Cult of Rock in um, uh, Theater of Pain. Right, for anyone who doesn't know, there's like there's a bunch of debuffs going out in there where if you don't dispel everything, then it's doing a lot of damage. You can then have to walk into like those little grippy hands, which are also doing damage, and you might just die. Well, if someone's low HP, you see they've got all of these debuffs on them. You don't have any debuffs on. You just void shift and you just, like, save a death, right? This is awesome. Um, you could also get, like, this Power with Life down here, which is a new spell. It's not too hard to get this. Like, I've taken Bulwark here, but this isn't, like... You absolutely do not have to go down this route at all. Like, you, like, you could come and get this, right? And then this is all, like, baseline needs to be taken. But, um... You know, you could take this. You could get Power with Life if you wanted to, you know. So, like, that that's absolutely an option. And then you can use this for a lot of healing again, a lot of throughput, right? You can do off-healing now, a Shadow Priest, a lot more. It's much more effective than what it was. So, it uh, definitely has to be a notable mention. The next notable mention is tankiness, right? So, you are incredibly tanky on life currently. And um, there's a Conduit which makes Fade uh, reduce damage taken. That is coming forwards, right? So... Fade reduces damage taken by 10% and then it has a uh, cooldown reduction here so it's only 20 seconds so look fade right 10 seconds of 10% damage reduction but then you're also getting this node here so protective light right so whenever you cast flash of light on yourself you get a 10% damage reduction you then get another 10% damage reduction here right so that's 20% DR um I don't know how they actually work whether they stack or whether they diminish in returns from these, right? I'm, I'm not entirely sure if, but it's still more DRs, right? You can then take a node over here to reduce your magical damage taken by 3%. So you can have like whatever it is, roughly, let's just say a 23% effective HP pool against any magical damage AOE done in Mythic Plus. It's very, very strong. You then still have Dispersion. You still have Desperate Prayer, right? So you have two like one and a half minute CDs if you want to. You can come and take Dispersion here, right? Um... So it's really, really strong. Honestly, uh, you have a lot of tankiness, a lot of like natural tankiness that you're getting moving forwards now. So that's awesome. The last things that I want to mention, right? So there's a couple of notable mentions in the in the tree again. Idol of Yorg Saron. I mentioned this a little bit when we were looking over the damage profile, right? 
This is essentially funnel damage based on the number of targets that you can apply Vampiric Touch to. This is going to be really, really strong in situations like Pools of Atonement, yeah, where you're pulling a bunch of mobs on top of the shards, right? And then you have a big target that you want to try and do damage to. Yuxaron does a lot of like burst damage, right? So there's a lot of burst damage, but you get to that burst damage way quicker if you have more vampiric touches out and you're getting more spirits, right? So the more targets, the more often you're going to get this priority damage. It's a bit weird in that you have no way of procking it. It is just you get to 100 stacks and then it procs. So you'll have to be tracking this and potentially, you know, you maybe you don't want to be like using blasts and void bolts at certain times because you're going to want to try and like play around this and make sure you get your burst at the right time. But it's still very, very good. It's a bit clunky, but it's very, very good. I really, really like it. Um, and then the other thing to mention is Idol of your charge over here. I think this is going to be way stronger for PvP, and I think it's going to make Shadow Priest very, very good for PvP, right? But there is uh, a point here, so I'd love your shards, right? Where based on your mind bender, you can use it on, on someone, and then based on whatever state they're in, you get different effects. So the first one is healthy, so if they're just a healthy, um, they've got a, a, a high level of HP and there's no real debuff on them or something, right? Then you and your mind bender deal 5% additional damage, so... Not the best. 5% extra damage on a cooldown is okay, but not great, right? Underneath this, we have Enraged. So if a mob is enraged, it then devours the enraged effect and increases your haste by 5%, right? Soothe part of it is on a one-minute cooldown, right, because of um, Mindbender, but then you get 5% haste. So this is a free soothe with Shadow Priest. You could then also use it on something on that's stunned, right? And then if the mob is stunned, you then generate five insanity every one second. That's a lot of insanity, right, that you could generate. So this could just be paired up with, like, Psychic Horror, and then you're getting a lot of insanity, right? Again, very, very strong for PvP. When something is feared, right, you and your mind bender deal 15% increased damage and do not break fear effects. Now... I don't know how easy this is to proc in Mythic Plus. I have tried it in a dungeon, but I couldn't really get it to proc, right? Because your fear just almost instantly gets broken because there's so much like AoE damage going out. But in PvP, if you just feared someone, you just get like eight seconds of stun. <laughs> it's like an eight second stun, right? Obviously other players can't be hitting them, but if you're in like a 1v1 situation or you've just like isolated someone on the other side of a map, you probably just kill them, right? Because you literally just get fear into silence, into horror, and like as long as the trinket's not up, right? They just that's sixteen seconds of CC. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to kill someone in sixteen seconds. So, um, super, super interesting. A notable mention, but not necessarily a win for Mythic Plus, right? Um, but definitely worthwhile mentioning. So, those are awesome. The bottom of this tree I really like. I think Yogg's Run's a little bit cl click clunky in the fact that there's no real way to, of you to proc this. It'd be cool if it was like you get up to 100 stacks and then the next time that you press death or something, so the next time you press Shadow with death, it procs thing from the beyond or... I don't know, when you use Mind Bender or something, it procs it. I don't know what you would do, but something that means that you would have agency over when you proc this, I think would be better... But it's still definitely mentioned. Like I, I do love it. Um, so th these are these are all really really cool. Um, great flavor for the class as well. Like I love this. Um, in terms of the flavor. So yeah, overall it's an eight out of ten. Like I mentioned at the start. Quick recap on reasons. Your AOE profile is getting way way better, right? So I love the fact that you can just on demand get your dots out now with Crash and Dark Void. They've changed Mindseer to just be a spender, so you don't have to then use Searing Nightmare as well. Um. I just, I, I really, really like that. Before you could spread, Searing Pain would spread um, Shadow Word Pain, right? But you didn't have a way of getting VTs out. And then it was clunky because I felt like using Searing Nightmare inside of Seer just wasn't, it like, it didn't really make sense. They've just combined, so you only have one keybind. This just makes way more sense to me. And you're just on like a 30 second cooldown now to spread your dots. Awesome. Love to see that. The next win is Twins of the Sun Priestess coming forwards. 
you now baseline have the same amount of utility as a holy priest. You will be giving someone else a PI all the time. Awesome. The final win is Idol of Insoth over here. This is a large, large chunk of uncapped AoE, or essentially uncapped because it's basically however many dots you can get out through Shadow with Pain, right? And you can get it on up to 15 targets. There's very few instances where you're going to go above 15 target count. So this is a lot of uncapped AoE again. Awesome to see. Wins were those three losses, right? First loss is the placement of Enzoth. <laughs> means that we have to come through Aya here. It's not the best. Essentially does nothing for AoE. I wish that I didn't have to take that, right? The next loss is the fact that you only have silence as an interrupt. You're the only class in the game really that doesn't have uh, a good it doesn't have good access to like an interrupt. Boomkin's the other instance, right? But Boomkin has an AoE silence effect, so it just doesn't compare really. And the final loss is the fact that they aren't really addressing movement at all. You can take Angelic Feather, you can take Body and Soul, right? But you don't have Door of Shadows access anymore. You don't have uh, a way to change Leap of Faith, so that means that you can jump to a target. You just have very, very little movement, so it's a, a bit unfortunate. Overall, though, it's a it's a nine out of ten, right? And I absolutely love it. It's 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 honestly such a good direction for for AUE specifically. It's class. It really, really is. It's 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 just such a good set of changes. It's like I said at the start. It feels almost like feral to me, where I'm so surprised by how effective they have made this class. Like it really does feel very, very good to pilot and play. I'm a little bit concerned that in like lower keys. Shadow Priest is just not going to do anywhere near as well because you have got a ramp time, right? You have to proc things like um, Echoing Void here to see your peak damages, you have like damage profiles. You have to proc things like Idol of Yog, yeah? And these have got ramp times to them. If you just don't proc these or like you go in, you spread your dots, the pack dies, and then on the next pack you can't spread your dots, then it's not going to be great. But for higher keys, I really think it's going to be good. Like the profile's getting way, way better, so super surprised honestly it just it feels great to play let's do a gameplay review then so i'm just going to do the full aoe opener again we can have a look at the profile for a second time just to show you what it's actually like i'll, I'll commentate over it right so let's just get our dots out so dark void shadow crash we'll use halo get that on cd let's use mind games let's use a charge of mind blast we'll use mind bender we use Void Eruption, and now we're just into our normal damage. All right. Mind Blast again. See it to spend our insanity, right? Right, but it's just been 30 seconds already, like, I've got Dark Void back up. Let's use Halo again and get that on CD, right? I, I love this so much for AoE. It's honestly really, really fun, so... Um, let's just quickly look over this again. So Echoing Void didn't do as much damage this time, right? Um, Mind Bed is a bit higher up. You know, Halo uncapped damage, right? So uncapped, uncapped. Spread as many as you want, but it's probably going to be about eight target capped, five target capped, uncapped essentially. This is scaling with the number of VTs that you get out, right? So it's eight target, uncapped, eight target, single target, uncapped, single target, uncapped, right? Like, I genuinely think that your damage is going to be something like, like 60% uncapped AoE. Um, with the rest of it being like eight targets and then like five to ten percent being pure single target right it's really really strong um let's just quickly show you right so we can take uh this pain of death here instead so this death speaker node means the shadowed pain has a chance to reset the cooldown of shadowed death because we have so many pains out this scales with AoE, right, because of Dark Void. So we're going to be getting more and more of those procs, right? And then Pain of Death means that Shadow Word Death deals increased damage and it does 60% of its damage to all targets affected by your Shadow Word Pain. So if we just get out Shadow Word Pains with Dark Void here, 
And then we use our two death charges, right? See, Pain of Death is doing a lot of damage here. Um, and obviously this scales with, with Uncapped. But again, if you're going to be pulling a lot of mobs, let's think if uh, a good example of this is like Gambit versus Streets, right? Gambit, you're going to have a lot of like Uncapped AoE. Streets, you're maybe not going to have as much Uncapped AoE. So you might go with Mindbender and inescapable torment over this right but this is going to be great for uncapped let's do a version where we take void torrent so we can come over the right hand side of the tree and now we get more priority damage and single target right so you can absolutely maintain your single target damage you can still take pain of death over here like you could swap this out and oh i would have to move other points around but like you could take uh mind bender and inescapable torment still or even take even more single target damage, right? So we could make it so that we want Mind Spike, um, and then Mind Spike has these chances to make it um, do additional target and be instant cast, right? So like you can you can come back and get most of your single target without losing all of your AOE. You've lost Pain of Death, you've lost Inescapable Torment, but you still have Enzoth, you still have Yogg-Saron, right? But now you get Mindbender you get Torrent and you're getting Mind Spike. So, like, these are actual options. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's similar to other classes that we've we've played where you can slide from full AoE to full single target and anywhere in between relatively easily. And I love that. Really, really good. Let's just show you what Torrent and Mind Spike are working like, right? So, we may as well just do a full AoE opener again. Spend our mind seers, right? This is torrent going out now. Straight into another seer. Right, like it's not doing as much AoE damage, but you're doing a lot more bio damage here. Right? And then you still get all of your single targets. So you're getting Torrent in here. You're getting Mindbender. You're getting your Mind Spike uh, buffs. So this is this one here. Yes, Edge of Darkness. So your next Mind Spike is in to cast and deals more damage, right? So look, we can we can do all of the the normal single target -y stuff that you would get, but you can take it with your AoE. So that's that's really cool, right? Um, let's just show you. Dog here, right? Um, so let's show you the stun version. I think this works on dummies, right? So, psychic horror into mind bender, and then look, look how much insanity you're generating, right? We're getting a lot of insanity here into another mind seer, right? Like that legitimately could be good in. Um, in AoE, it's a uh, it's a lot of insanity, man. I just love Torrent as well. Torrent's such a cool ability. Is there anything else to show you? So, Coalescing Shadows is new. It's essentially uh, a, a proccing buff, and then but, so Mind Seer and Shadowwood Pain Damage have a four percent chance to grant you Coalescing Shadows, and Mind Flay has a fifteen percent chance. Coalescing Shadows stacks up to three times. Mind Blast and Mind Spike consume all Coalescing Shadows to deal 10% increased damage, which isn't that great. You know, it's a little bit of single target damage, but the, the most important part, part of this is and consuming at least one increases the damage of your periodic effects by 10% for 15 seconds. I think, again, this scales with AoE, right? Because you're getting more Shadowwood Pains out, but essentially this is just up constantly and you just have an extra 10% periodic damage here. Single target, you may have to increase the chance, right? So like Puppet Master down here, and there's another one, Harness Shadows, which is just increasing the chance with which you can actually proc it. I don't know how far down you have to go into this, but you may have to for single target. I don't think you will for AoE. But again, you can probably just get a flat 10% periodic damage increase through these nodes, right? So, um, I mean, let's just let's just show you. Let's get out Ains. Um...
So now we proc it, right? We just got another one, but we did proc it and then it's this buff here, right? Which is increasing the OP rock damage. I don't think that's like got less than like an 80% uptime with just one point spent in uh in AoE, yeah. It's uh got a very, very high uptime. Is there anything else? I mean, Mind Spike we've just spoken about, but you can get the Surge of Darkness down here, which again, based on the number of BTs you've got out, you then get more Mind Spike damage. Um, you can take Mind Melt over here as well. I don't know if you could. Say if you wanted to do the... Okay, yeah, you can. So say if you want to do the partially AoE, partially, like, priority damage, right? You could take this... Um, because you can you could drop a point here to get like mind bender right so you you can absolutely get into uh all of your damage but still get into mind melt as well mind melt is just mind spike um reduces the cast time of your next mind blast and increases the critical strike chance right so um look if we just spam mind spike right so two mind spikes we then have two stacks of mind melt that means our next mind blast is instant cast and has a higher critical strike chance so that just crit there I think, again, it has way more implications for single target, right? And like Raiden, it doesn't really do anything for AoE, to be honest. Um, it also affects PvP, that you can like just get your dots out and stuff, and then the free casts of Mind Spike that you're getting through your dots, that means that you can get free casts of Mind Blast, right? So you're just instant casting. Um, but not, not that much of a difference for... A mythic plus in terms of what to show you in the priest tree honestly there's not much to show you here most of this stuff you just baseline get anyway i mean twins is something slightly new right it's it's not new but it's all baseline um the same as what priest would normally be able to get you can get something here called void tendrils right um the other things in fact i will show let's show you power word life right if i head over here um, so Angelic Bulwark is a bit of self throughput. So when an attack and when an attack brings you below thirty percent health, you gain an absorption shield equal to fifteen percent of your max health for twenty seconds. Cannot occur more than once every ninety seconds. This is just like a bit of self throughput. You could then drop these nodes. So lights, inspiration, increase the maximum health gained from desperate pair by fifteen percent. Right. Again, this is like and it just makes desperate pair a little bit more of a defensive. Well, you could get. Uh, if you want to take this here, so this means that Desperate Prayer is a shorter cooldown, right? And then you could take Surge of Light and Power Word Life. So if I take these, um, this is just throughput, but obviously we mentioned some throughput earlier. We mentioned, you know, Halo, we mentioned Holy Nova, but Power Word Life is actually really good throughput. Um, just to show you, this basically, the way that it works is it does 10k healing, but if the target is low HP, it does four times as much, um, five times as much, sorry. So, show you that. That was a 100k critical heal, and we have a health pool of 162k. <laughs> so obviously, as HP scales and, um, and spell power scales, it's going to stay roughly the same. But, I mean, normally it should just do 50k, but it does about a third of your HP pool. That is crazy. Really, really strong. If you need throughput, you can come and get this. It's not like you're losing too much, to be honest. Void Shift, I can't show you, but that's a PvP talent, right? We mentioned it earlier, I'm pretty sure, in the notable mention section. Otherwise, honestly, we've shown you everything that I think I want to. Um, it all feels really good to use. I'm very happy with how Shadow plays in AoE. In case you have just jumped to the end, right, we'll just quickly cover it again. It's a 9 out of 10, right? And the reasons why it's a 9 out of 10, because it's getting... It's AoE re reworked, right? So the AoE rework means that Mind Seer is now a spender and just damage rather than having to use Siri Nightmare. You also get access to Dark Void and Shadow Crash, which just spread dots for you automatically. Dark Void does up to 15 targets with Shadow Pain, um, Shadow Wood Pain. Shadow Crash does up to four targets with VT, Vampiric Touch, right? We then get significantly more AoE here with Idol of Enzoth. This takes a while to proc, but as long as mobs are living, this is a massive uncapped AoE damage increase. We're talking somewhere between 10 and 15% of your overall damage profile on four targets by itself. Obviously, that's going to get bigger on uncapped AoE, right? Um, the final win is the twins of the Sun Priestess is coming forwards. This is massive. It means that you will actually be giving a PI to someone else in the group. Very, very good for utility. Awesome. The losses, they're not that bad. 
it's enough to lose a point, but they're not that bad. The first loss is the position of Enzoth. You can see here we've gone through a single target build, so Voice Torrent to get down here. We could also go through Insidious Aya if we didn't need what want to spend all of these points, right? It's in a bit of a weird position that we have to go through single target to get to AoE. Not the best, but okay, we can deal with it. The other two points, one point is that Silence hasn't really been reworked. I would love it if they'd taken the opportunity to give you, say, a point underneath where you could change Silence to just be like a 22 second interrupt. Something like Hunter, right? The Hunter's interrupt. I, I would have loved that. Just to give you that choice for Mythic Plus, that would have been awesome, but they haven't done. So you still just have a 45 second baseline Silence. The other point is that there's no real new movement coming into the tree, and it's definitely something that Priest struggles with, right? So you have Angelic Feather here and uh, Body and Soul if you need it, right? You can take them, but there's no like instantaneous movement that you can get, so it's uh, a bit unfortunate that that's not there. But those are the three wins, three losses. Otherwise, honestly, this class is amazing. I'm so surprised with how good this is. Shadow Priest actually feels really, really good. I'm, I'm, like I said, super surprised. It's a bit like Feral to me, where I just was not expecting it to play this well and be this effective. And the combination of those things, I think, is exactly what you want when you're coming to a new class. So, uh, a new spec, sorry. Very, very good changes. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have done, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.